So, what is CERN? I mean, who cares? And, I mean, that, that's the main point, is that it doesn't even matter, and that nobody really knows for sure. For all we know, it could just be, like, a Disneyland prop. Like, it, it might not even do anything. You might not even be able to turn it on. And maybe it does. Maybe it does do some scientific-type experiments. I mean, I believe that people do experiments. I just... I think that they're more similar to, say, like, alchemists of old. Basically, a lot of modern science is just, like, trying random things and seeing what happens. And... It's just all this game where no matter what happens, you being a part of academia, being a part of the system, it dictates the way that you get to talk about it. That's like, I believe that chemistry is like a real thing. I believe that at some point genetics is a real thing. I just think that the sandbox that they allow the academics to play in is just always wrong. And it's always built in such a way to push a certain agenda. Just like biology, it gets, it's so infuriating how obvious this is in biology. You can't research anything when it comes to biology without hearing so much bullshit about 300 years ago, or 300 years, 300 million years ago, like, and so that's the incorrect paradigm that you're forced to play along with if you're going to do anything biology related. Oh, how come you didn't talk about the evolutionary, everything has to be about evolution these days, and you can tell that it's taken as an assumption and that it gets shoehorned into everything. That thing, they'll always talk about, like, you go try to watch any YouTube video about any animal and some bonehead will start the video 400 million years ago in the whatever era. And that, that's how science, modern science and academia works. So at the end of the day, even if they are doing something legitimate, they're gonna be talking about it in a nonsensical way that doesn't actually match reality. Um, I have so many slides to get through, but I feel like I just did a good overall ramble of what do I personally think CERN is? I think it really is just like a prop, like a Hollywood set, like a sci-fi set. It, maybe they try to do experiments there, I don't know, but it's probably just a bunch of bullshit. And to me, it seems like a lot of times it just reminds me exactly of a movie. What's different between CERN and a movie? where they have some high-tech equipment in a movie and you look at the the screens on a movie and they put a bunch of graphs and stuff it's probably a graphical designer who came up with the higgs boson bozo whatever uh i guess it's been in the new they turned it on again so here's like a thing you can tell that it's just a media sensation if this really was this like super high-tech uh piece of scientific machinery they wouldn't turn it on once every three years and just abandon it it's it's just like this it's a character it really is it's a character on the world stage cern and they love i mean they're probably the ones that come out with the stories oh gosh is cern gonna burn a black hole or turn a black hole into it really is just a character that is playing a part on the world stage of scary, mysterious, sci-fi, something. Because if it was a real thing, they'd be continuously doing tests with it. If they had this really cool uh, place to run experiments, scientists would be booking it out constantly, and they would constantly be using it to perform experiments. They wouldn't shut it down for three years and bring it back. It's just a, it's just a media story, how these things disappear for a while. Oh, we haven't talked about CERN for a while. Let's do a story on that. So there, I mean, obvious things, gematria things. As run three begins, CERN announces discovery of three new exotic particles. Yes, it is that stupid. Orange and 33. It really is that dumb. Holding your hands in certain ways, saying specific buzzwords, ma 33, ma orange. It is that stupid. That's probably why, it, that's probably why it's three particles on run three literally so that they can just hit that number 33 and chuckle to themselves so it's stuff like this that just hints at it's all a bunch of bullshit if it if it wasn't bullshit why why would they continually keep hitting the same numbers and be obsessed with orange and 
hand signs. We'll get to that later. There's just, I mean, there really weren't that many hand signs. Mostly what's been going on with CERN is another phenomenon that these people like to do, which is just, they like to throw award ceremonies for themselves and they like to clap them for themselves for nothing. Uh, Israel, I, I included this because of Israel. I thought that was pretty funny. And 23 is like a, if you're, if you're well-versed on Gematria, you notice a lot of things like 32 and 23 coming up a lot too. Some people say it's because two threes is 33. It's like a way of saying 33 without saying 33. Two three, two threes is 33. Anyways, I, I just thought this was funny that Israel is the exception. People have talked about it so much how the CERN is a not even hidden 666. Yeah, and I agree. It has a lot of repeated six ideas in the in the logo, which is pretty typical of these people hiding the symbolism in plain sight. Rabina Vici. Why did I do this? This guy. Anyways, I feel like I've already had something to do with the World Wide Web. Lock Spizer. Doing the devil horns. That's why I picked this one. And they always show that watch, too. They show a watch. So, sure, I, I think that they really do do experiments. I do believe in science, but just I think that modern science is all a lie and that people, people seriously think that peer review is like the pinnacle of truth, which I find hilarious. I've been a part of academia, and it really is a emperor has no clothes situation and imposter syndrome is rampant because they are really phonies and it's just a bunch of people patting each other on the back and uh, there really is oftentimes no substance there and if there is substance they have to talk about it in a way that that isn't fully correct so how do you know that this actually does anything if you've never been there i guess here i'll just the the main point of this is I think that things like CERN are major distractions, and it just doesn't matter. You, This is not something that any of us have any control over, and it's also not anything that anybody can touch. I can't go there and perform a, an experiment at CERN, and this goes to all sorts of things like radiocarbon. Why can't I go and check out a radiocarbon dating machine and, and use it? And th these things are elitist. It's If there's any anything that is super elitist, you can just immediately reject it because you can't trust it. Science should be reproducible by anyone, and you shouldn't have to be a member of a, a select group of people in order to perform science. And this stuff is very top-down. Oftentimes, even, even if you do get your PhD in particle physics, you're probably not actually going to CERN and running an experiment. This stuff is top-down, and they just feed you data. Astronomy is the exact same way. Just because you have a PhD in astronomy and you're allegedly doing research, that doesn't mean that you're like looking at stuff with an actual telescope. A lot of times these people are just given data. How is that science? If, if top down somebody just hands you data and they're like, interpret that, that's not science. Similarly, this is not science. Nobody here can confirm whether this is actually doing science or if it's just a prop. Uh, 27 is another number that pops up a lot because it's 3 cubed. It's the perfect cube of 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. <clears throat> oh, and 100 meters is about 330 feet. You see that a lot, 100 meters. But I mean, that stuff like that, it's like 100 is a round normal number, but it is almost 330 feet. Hmm... Anyways, I have so many, so many slides here, but I, 
really have said almost everything that I want to say. It's the same as NASA. Look at the orange. That is like the safety orange color, the same NASA orange color. You're going to see it everywhere. And maybe this will just be a time I can retell a story. I'll tell a, a personal story. And I've told this story before, but probably not that many times. It's a story about orange. And I did a, I did a research paper with a friend. And his girlfriend was like a graphic design or something like that. And so after we, we had made our poster for... Uh, it was like, a you know, in college, you... They'll get a bunch of people together and for whatever little research project you're doing. And a bunch of different people show off their posters. So that's what we were doing. Anyways, we hand our poster off to uh, my partner's girlfriend. And when it comes back, it was like totally changed, which I, I expected that to happen. And she totally did a good job making it like pop, graphic designy. She totally made it way better. But the point is... Our poster came back, this shade of bright orange all over. It was just so bright orange all over. And it's because it's a calling card to these people. I mean, I have so many stories on this from my life. Before I went on a, a trip to Europe, my mom made sure to buy me the most obnoxiously bright orange backpack. And now I know it's like she was putting a mark on me. So like, hey, look over here, guys. Look at, look at this unicorn child. Anyways. So yeah, that's it. I'll, I, I have something funny at the end of this video. At least I find it funny, so I'll skip to it. They'll, they'll be open about the symbolism. Look at this. This is the dome. Notice how they didn't make it like a total sphere. It's a dome, and then this is what Earth really does look like. This is one of those hidden, uh, hidden knowledge, and also like they like to do things where you interpret it two different ways. Somebody who's totally asleep would be like, oh, look, it's a sphere. But if you actually know the truth, you'll say, that's not a sphere, that's flat on the bottom with a dome over the top, which is actually where we live. Yes, the globe. There was another 27 in there, by the way. Uh, Hindu crap. I, I picked this because a resident artist at CERN NASA and CERN and other quote-unquote science organizations must have so many artists on hand. And it's, uh, wasn't there some big-time truther that came out and was like, oh yeah, I was a, I was an artist that did some of the ball earth paintings or something? I might be wrong on that, but. New exotic particles. Oh, I picked this because they, another symbolism idea they love is reflections. As above, so below. So, it's a distraction. It's distracting you from stuff like this, more simple. And it's a boogeyman. If anything is portrayed as a boogeyman, oh no, they're turning CERN back on again. It's bullshit. And it's largely a distraction. Uh, I feel the same about the harp, when people are going on and on about harp. It's like, none of us have control over harp. It's so far away from you. Why do you even assume Harp can do anything? And instead of stuff like the 5G towers that they obviously put up everywhere is probably what's causing the weird local clouds, not some mysterious boogeyman out in the middle of nowhere that nobody can even go to. So this, I briefly mentioned this earlier. I wanted to put a clip in of the whole NASA. Have you guys seen the, the NASA, was it the Curiosity? It's one of the funniest videos I've ever seen in my life. The, the test, when they were testing the Curiosity landing mechanism, the Curiosity rover landing mechanism is the giant, it's such a piss take on how ridiculous can we make this outer space stuff see. But the, the video of them testing it is hilarious because they show the test happen and it's the most janky thing ever. It's like, are you kidding me? Is that what, that's really what you're doing? But then everyone claps like it's the most successful thing ever. That's what they do. They just videotape themselves clapping. Oh, yeah. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> have you and have you guys ever been at a live taping of something? If you've been to a live taping of something, you know how this works. They, There's a guy sitting at the front with a big thing that says applause. And, and they tell you beforehand, okay, when 
when you see the the guy in the front hold up the applause sign applause and they, they sit people around and direct the audience that's how these i mean these they're all just a bunch of bozos in on it so they they love it they love this stuff okay now everybody clap i thought it was funny how the funny but not surprising how the masks it's it, there's no logic to it and what I thought was funny is how these people are supposed to be super brainy science people. But if you know the, the way that these people operate about the whole modern uh, current event thing, there's no logic to it. It's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, how do you know that these how do you know that these things aren't just uh, something that somebody like how do you know that that's science and not just a graphic that somebody made exactly like graphics get made for a movie sciencey graphics for a movie that could just be a movie you don't know that there's actual data behind that it's probably just art somebody made one of those one of these people whatever you know the one of the the artists resident artists you very often see people like this involved in academia, plenty of that. This is a hand sign. That is a hand sign on the right. Alice taking it down. There's some a lot of obvious implications of Alice. They look so stupid. They look so dumb. Point. They love to point. This also reminds me of, you know, in Law and & Order and, and things like that, when they go and they, they interview somebody who's, like, doing a job, and the person just keeps doing the job while they're having the interview. It's like, it's for, for some reason, this reminds me of that. Because it's just, like, simulated work. It's, okay, pretend to be working. Pretend to be observing things and pointing. And, you know, those kind of people. The, the skull and the bones of these people. Those are some very low ears on the left. Point. Okay, now point. Diversity shot. <laughs> Here's the hand sign. Okay, that's not a normal thing that people do with their hands. The smug look on this person's face. So this was a funny... I'll end with this. You can tell that these places are a bunch of bullshit by the reviews. They, they can't even operate a tourist place. So why do we assume that everything behind the scenes runs perfectly? If they can't even run a tourist shop and bringing people around a museum, how can we trust that they're doing correct science under there? Uh, it's really hard to understand that an organization literally dealing with rocket science can't set up online reservations, ticket purchases, Feels like they make you come all the way there to, what, buy some memorabilia at the shop and go back home? Really disappointed. <clears throat> so I know you guys know how to read. The pens are so expensive that the gift shop doesn't even use them for payment signatures. Anyways, I, I have a fun time reading people's reviews. Maybe it's like cathartic and reading other people write about their frustrating experiences something i i love about low low rated reviews there are a couple of vending machines in case you have to wait for hours like i did big fan of the scientific part of cern very disappointed in this how do you even know you didn't even get to see anything how how do you know that you're a big fan of the science of cern besides pop science articles that you've read you didn't actually see anything This is such a unique and interesting place with so many scientists, and yet we didn't meet any. Because when we went there, the individual tours were fully booked. And the snobby and unfriendly receptionist told us that we needed to be two hours ahead in the place. That there, You can see people have a lot of faith in the project, besides going there and having a horrible experience. Lots and lots and lots of stars for the actual protagonists of this project. How do you know? For all you know, they don't. That's the point. They don't know. And they never actually experience anything, but they still leave thinking that it's a legitimate thing. 
seriously in need of Disney magic. I thought that was a funny thing to say. <laughs> I could get a better explanation of what's going on here by watching the Big Bang Theory show. Some of these comments were perfect. Like, I don't know if they know what they're saying tongue-in-cheek, but th this is just perfect. Um... I just cannot believe that they are able to do serious science here. Man, I, I just love these. It was too good. Seems a huge bureaucratic entity, and the visit was not so informative at all. And then you see a bunch of BS like this. You know, stop feeding into the spookiness. You could pause and read any of these if you want. <laughs> Yeah, I love what you do, but the quality of the items on your gift shop, particularly textiles, is appalling. After one wash, the print is gone and pens fall apart. That's pretty much how this world works. Things You build up these things so much in your mind. You've seen so many pretty photoshopped images of things and well-crafted media things. But then when you get there, you see it for what the giant heap it is. They can't even do a web registration for this place. There's something about an Italian guy I thought was funny. <laughs> uh, the, somebody just commented that, 666 Beast. This was hilarious. Too loud, had trouble listening to Tour Guide. He was eating chips. <laughs> yep. So a lot of people have the same experiences. They can't even run a tour guide. How, how do you expect them to be able to really be doing things behind the scenes if they can't even run a museum? And yeah, it's because it's just Disneyland. Hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone.